welcome everyone for one last time to science policy and advocacy for STEM scientists certificate course. Um, the next person that's going to be talking is Chloe McPherson. So um, hopefully, Chloe, you can share your screen. Uh, whilst Chloe is doing that, um, just provide a bit of background on her. So she's a Congressional Science and Engineering Fellow for 2020 to 2021, sponsored by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. From 2017 to 2020, Chloe worked as an Associate Government Relations Officer at AAAS, where she served as an editor of AAAS's Science Policy Net uh, Newsletter. The policy alert and played an integral role in the AAAS programs, including catalyzing advocacy in science and engineering, which is the case workshop and the Golden Goose Award. Prior to her time at AAAS, Chloe interned with the White House Domestic Policy Council Office of, en of Energy and Climate Change and the Department of Energy Office of, en of Energy Policy and Systems Analysis. She received her BS and MS in Mechanical Engineering, both from Iowa State University. And yeah, Chloe's going to take it away. Um, she's been a Congressional Fellow for the past three weeks, and I'm sure everyone's excited to hear a bit more about her. So um, without further ado, Chloe, the stage is yours. Thank you, Rosie. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen, yes? Um, okay, so that was a very great introduction, thank you. So I just wanted to give just a, another very, very quick um, about me before we talk about um, what you're here for. Um, so like Rosie mentioned, I did my undergrad and master's at Iowa State University. I'm a non-PhD person, so uh, there's some of us out there in the science policy sphere. Um, up until about a month ago, I worked at AAAS, so that's I think what I'll be focusing on um, my talk today. So I'll be kind of taking that next step after what Karina just talked about. So once you're out of school, what like early career can you expect when you like look into the science policy um, and local policy engagement worlds? So yeah, so I worked at AAAS is, um, in the Office of Government Relations where I focused mainly on the case workshop, which you might've heard of, um, which brings uh, a grad students from around the country to DC for a three and a half day workshop. Um, focus on science communication, science policy, and then end of the Hill Day, where they go to Capitol Hill um, and have meetings with uh, representatives and staff. As well, I worked on the Golden Goose Award, which I'll talk about a little bit more on the next slide. Um, and then, yeah, before that, I uh, interned at DPC at the White House, uh, it was called DPC Domestic Policy Council, and at the U.S. Department of Energy in the Ames National Lab. And currently, I am a Congressional Fellow as of Two weeks ago, I officially worked for um, Representative Chrissy Houlihan from Pennsylvania. She's a Democrat. And so since I'm working in the House, I'm covering a swath of issues, including energy and environment, science, technology, and STEM education, as well as working with the uh, Congresswoman's uh, STEM, uh, Women in STEM uh, Caucus, which I can talk about a little bit more. So. So I just wanna start just quickly with a science policy 101, as I call it. So just things that you can do now and things that early in your career, you kinda of wanna just make sure you have some experience with um, to learn the lingo and things like that. I'm sure you guys know all of these things or have seen most of these before, um, but the communication social media is key, especially early career. Um, oftentimes you'll find yourself stuck doing um, a social media work in addition to your other works, partially just because that's, you know, when you're the newest person in town, um, usually because you're not going to start at the top when you join a science policy, when you start working in science policy, it's good to have that skill in your back pocket, um, communication, obviously. Um, so I won't read through all of these things. I'm sure you have um, heard about many of them, but I will focus on uh, as you move into science policy and, you know, obviously you guys are in this course, um, start to figure out which angle you want to focus on policy and where you can, you know. Um, I know tonight is focused on the local level, but you know, you can work at the federal, state, or local levels. Um, you've probably heard this phrase, all politics is local from uh, Tip O'Neill, who was a former uh, House Speaker. Um, and it's just so true that, you know, we focus on policy on, you know, the national level, but everything is local. And I can say from my experience so far as a congressional fellow, everything, 
no matter what you're focused on, you're applying it back to how does this help the people in my district? And so it is very hyper-local. As well, a few Twitter follow recommendations that I uh, say, and you might be following some of these people, Toby Smith, who works at the Association of American Universities, Matt Horahan, who works at AAAS, we used to work together. Um, he runs the R&D budget and policy program. And then for science policy jobs, a former colleague and I run this Twitter account at SciPol Jobs, or you can follow the hashtags SciPol Jobs. For science policy jobs, uh, we do a little bit of everything on the local or national levels uh, and try to and keep multiple things there. So I just wanted to talk about a few policy programs, particularly just from AAAS since I spent the past three years working there, um, and then talk about a few that are specifically locally focused that I feel like could hopefully be useful for this talk. So I mentioned the case workshop, which happens every spring um, pre-pandemic and hopefully post-pandemic as well. Um, as well, AAAS has its STPF program, which I'm sure you know, you've know, you met and heard from many fellows. There's both the executive and the congressional side. The Mass Media Fellowship is another good way to get experience in the communication side. And that is technically local because you're placed many times with like a local um, paper or newspaper. Uh, in terms of getting experience, I recommend the communicating science workshops as well. Um, what it does is in the name, it's a way to learn about the science of science communication and uh, perfecting your skills in that. An interesting program that I always recommend to people is also AAA's a sea change program, which is, an, it's a way, um, it's a program that in universities and institutions can enroll in. And it takes a look at uh, how the university is working uh, towards building an equitable student body and scientists, and I, it evaluates many different factors. AAAS is actually going through this process itself to see how it can be a more equitable place for people to work. Then a coalition I used to be engaged with, the Engaging Scientists and Engineers and Policy Coalition, they work a lot with ESOL, which Artie will talk about more. Um, that's just a, a coalition that anyone can join and that you can meet lots of people through. Um, so then AAA's program specifically focused locally. Uh, there's a couple of programs that are new, newer to AAA's that focus on different states or different localities in the US, including the Center for Scientific Evidence and Public Issues known as the Epicenter. They focus on um, creating short uh, briefs on particular scientific issues and have worked with different states, including Kansas, I believe. Uh, the Local Science Engagement Network is another new one that they're working in, I believe, Georgia, Colorado, and Missouri. And that one has a focus on climate and energy. And that's a way that you can get involved there. Another one is the Science is Us program, which is taking like a, a whole of science policy look. So not just, you know, the STEM professionals who have PhDs, but taking a look at people, not people who just design the airplanes, but the people who actually physically make them and looking at like an all-inclusive STEM uh, sphere and is really interesting. As well, there's a Science and Human Rights Coalition. They have an all Call scientist program where scientists can be involved in talking to policymakers about the intersection between science and human rights, uh, particularly in tech is a hot issue these days. And then I mentioned the Golden Goose Award, which uh, was mentioned earlier. So that's a program where it honors federally funded science that's kind of sounded weird or you know is misunderstood that that's gone on to have a big difference. And the reason why I included this on the engaging locally slide is because you know they're always looking for new examples of you know we all know these examples of research um, that's gone on to have very big changes that people don't know about. And so the way that's involved with policy is that we engage or they engage with policymakers on the hill. Um, four things. So those stories come from different universities typically. So then just since we are talking about uh, local engagement, these are just a few examples from past attendees of our case workshop at AAAS. So just things that they did before coming to the workshop um, and some did after the workshop that gives you like, you know, a leg up and uh, different ways to be involved locally. I won't read through those. And then just had a few, you know, DC from afar things, different things to consider doing during the pandemic that, you know, could be interesting uh, because 
as we know, networking hasn't stopped just because the pandemic started. And so uh, as you consider doing meetings with Capitol Hill and your local legislators, um, consider, you know, doing caucuses as well, meeting with caucuses. That's a way, usually there's two co-chairs from different states and that's a way to engage with different offices and committees that way. Um, ESTEP and NSPN have their monthly virtual happy hours, which is a great way to meet people now that it's virtual around the entire country who are working in science policy or interested in policy. Um, I mentioned, yeah, doing virtual meetings. So you can do coffees with people working in policy and current fellows. I know that there are a lot of people in my current congressional cohort who are where trying to do a focus of getting a more diverse cohort in the future. So we're doing a lot of um, informationals and coffees with people who might be interested in this program. And then I recommend, I'm sure you've heard of it, the Day One Project, which is um, focused on science policy for the next administration coming into January 2021, whether that's the current administration starting again or the new, uh, new Biden administration coming in and just different science policy uh, topics and papers for that. And I would recommend including looking at the contributors for that for coffees as well. So with that, thank you. And I will turn it back over to Renzi.